Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Simple Calculator app using uh, Python 3 and TK Inter. Let me show you what we're going to be doing today. So if we take a look up here on the screen, you'll see I've already got this functioning. So I've got a very simple calculator app. Here's where my display is going to be. I've got a bunch of buttons and I have got, uh, yeah, basically some math to do. So let's go ahead and try a little bit of math. Let's try six times seven and then I'm gonna click equals and that gives us 42 and then say I could add six and that equals 48 and we can also do things multiply using decimals 8.9 click equals that gives us a big long number and then I can hit C to clear out and start over okay so basically what we're gonna be doing today is learning how to use TK enter the grid geometry manager, so we can lay out our buttons how we like them. A uh, command called eval, and that's what lets us do the math very, very easily. We're gonna be using something called try except to avoid errors. And we're gonna use something called a lambda, so we can pass values from the buttons to some functions. So why don't we go ahead and get started? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and import, as I mentioned, we're gonna be using TK enter. Now, if you just happen to still be on Python 2, make that a capital T, but otherwise you should be on Python 3. It is a small t. And then I'm going to create the window, and I'm going to call it root. You don't have to call it root, but that's what I call it. And it is tkinter.tk. Notice this is a capital T. This is a lowercase t. So don't make that mistake. And I'm going to give it a title, even though you can't really see it on mine, but depending on the way your computer is set up, you might see more or less of these letters. I'm just going to call it calculator. And then the last thing I'm going to do down at the bottom, this is the last line of the program. That's why I'm leaving some space. Say so root.main loop. And if I don't have this, don't forget the parentheses. If I don't have this, the window will shut automatically. Now, I am using an editor called Genie. I just happen to be running on Ubuntu Linux, but this will work on Mac, it will work on Windows. It'll look a little bit better actually on, on Mac probably. Can't speak to Windows, but probably it'll look really nice. Um, so in this case, I can either click this button here on Genie or I can push F5 on my keyboard. And you can see here, I've got a blank window and it has space where I'm gonna start putting in my widgets on my calculator. So the first thing I wanna do here uh, is to basically design the GUI. I don't have to do it this way, but this kind of makes sense to me. So what I want to do is think about what buttons I need. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the layout. Okay, so hopefully you can see on the screen, you should be able to see the, the general layout. So you'll see that the GUI itself is divided into columns and it's also divided into rows. We have four columns labeled 0, 1, 2, and 3. We have six rows labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We have 17 buttons. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, C, 0, dot, the four operators, and then the equals button. Notice that the equals button actually goes outside of just one small grid area, and I'll talk about how to do that. Also notice that the label at the top 42 where the result comes also goes across several columns. I'm going to show you how to do that code today. So let's get started on the coding. So the first thing I want to do is start creating my, well I'll create the result. Um, now watch what I do here. The result is a GUI widget type. So GUIs are made up of widgets. That's like buttons and different elements. Could be a drop down list, etc., etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a label called result. And it is a TK enter label. It is gonna go into the root window. And when I start my program, it's going to have no text. It's gonna be blank. Now, as I mentioned before, it's gonna be going into the grid. So if we go back to our grid, I'm gonna be setting it at zero, zero. That's the leftmost grid. But notice how it goes in, well, notice how it goes into different columns. So what I need to do in my code is the following. I'm gonna say label.result.grid. 
and I need to say where it's going to go. And it's going to go into row zero. It's going to go into column zero. And let's say let's let's, let's try this and see what happens. I'm going to put some text here. Uh, I'll just put 42 and see what happens. So I'm going to run it, and I got a, a an error. It says label is not defined. Okay, it's label underscore result. So let's go ahead and run that again. And nothing is popping up, which is not a good sign. <laughs> but I can, I'm sure I can work around that. Uh, oh, exit, sorry. So I think I still have an error. So control C, let me get out of this here. Okay, let's try it one more time, see what happens. Oh, it did pop up. It's just so small, he can't see anything. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. It does that. So you can see how the 42 is way over here. Um, it's So it's actually kind of hiding out in this one little grid spot. But what I wanted to do, well, actually, I want to leave that there for now. I'll, I'll come back to that. It, it'll make more sense once I start adding things. Um, so what I'm going to start doing is creating all of the different buttons. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just do this row one. So we got one, two, three, and divide. So let's go ahead and do that together. So these are buttons. So that's why I'm going to say button. And I'm just going to call it the first one button one. Makes sense. And I don't have to call it that, but that's what makes sense to me. It is going to go into the root window. The text is going to be one. And for buttons, we need to give them a command, as in what happens when we click them. So let me go and explain this in a second. Let's go ahead and get that set up. I'm going to say button one dot grid, and it's going to go into row equals one, column equals zero. Now I'm going to go and run this, and we'll probably get an error. Okay, you see where it says here, error, add is not defined. So I need to define my functions. So I should put a little comment here create GUI and I'm gonna put a little comment here create functions okay so I want to define my first function add and this is I'm not talking about adding I'm talking about adding a character to my formula that I'm trying to do and I'm just gonna put pass here for now so I'm gonna run that and see if it works okay again so now you can see I've got it's really hard to move that and get a, get a grip on it but you can see now I've got one button and if I click it, of course, nothing happens. So let me go ahead and just finish out that first row real quick. And this is kind of how I do things. So it's going to be button one, button two, button three, and I think this is divide. Again, if you're not sure, you can always click back and, and check out you know, what, what goes where, and that is divide. So I'm going to go back to here and now, the row is going to be the same, but the column's going to change. So it's going to be column two, and that's going to be in column three. Of course, the text is going to change. And the slash. So let me go ahead and check that and make sure I've got that row complete. Okay, so now you can see how it's coming together. But now you can really see how this 42 is really way over here in that column. So if I made this a bigger, longer number, zero, four, two, four, two again, you can see how what starts to happen is it's messing up the distribution of the buttons and things. So let me just make that really long so it's really clear in case anybody doesn't quite get that. So you can see here, because this is in row zero, column zero, it expands to fill up this whole column. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little attribute here called column span. And there, since there are four columns, I'm gonna put four here. And now if I run it, so even though it's gotten bigger, it doesn't mess up the uh, size. Now probably if I put a really big number, it might go out to the end, but we're gonna have to just deal with that one. Okay, so I'm going to go back and get rid of that for now since we don't need it. Now here's the problem. This, this is probably something new if you've seen some tutorials of mine. With TK Enter, I cannot put a value in here. So what I want to do is be able to put add one, 
add to, actually I'm gonna put that in quotation marks, you'll see why in a minute. And in this case, divide. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put, what can I put there? Um, I forgot what I called it, my original version. And value, okay, value, even though it might not be a value. So I'll put that there for now. Let's run it and see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and click one of these buttons. Okay, and actually, let me go ahead and, I'm gonna try this, print value. Oops, wrong button. Now you see something interesting there. It already has printed those values out. Um, so if I click one, nothing's happening. I click three, nothing's happening, okay? So what happens is when it gets here, it evaluates that and then it's done. So this is probably worth your, 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 your time right now. So what we gotta do is we gotta use something called a lambda. And this is sometimes referred to as a kind of inline function. And again, I don't really know that much about this, but I just know that this is what fixes it. So that's really, that's a good result. So you need to put lambda and then add, and then our function. And now if I run it, you can see how one, two, three, and divide did not print out down here. And then if I press two, you can see now down here, I got three, I got one, etc., etc. Now at this point, I could actually do the rest of the program and get it working and then add the GUI stuff. Um, depends how you wanna do things. But I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda of get the GUI done. And I think what I'll do is I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna put that here. This is going to be button four, and it's going to be, let's see, text four, and I'm going to put a four here, and that's going to be in row two, column zero. So let me go ahead and just verify that. So the four button is in row two, column zero, so we're happy there. And then, what I'll, again, what I'll do is I'll just copy this and paste it a few times. Okay, so I'm going to have button four, Button five, button six, uh, button seven, no, four, five, six, and then it's gonna be uh, times, I'll call it multiply. Again, this part is probably a little boring, <laughs> so um, you might wanna speed up and, and skip this if you know what you're doing now but it's pretty straightforward. Um, the GUI stuff just takes time. Make sure you don't mess up over here. Make sure you change everything that needs to be changed. And then we're using an asterisk. Don't use an X because we need to use the asterisk, which is the way that Python does it. And you'll see why in a few minutes. So, and column three. And then again, this is something that always drives me nuts with my beginner students, is they refuse to test things. So I've added some code, I'm gonna test it. So did I get my second row? Yes. Click four, is it printing? Yes. Click five, yep, six. Okay, so you can see that it printed five because I made a mistake here. And then let's put the asterisk. And so then I go back here and fix that. And I should test it again, but I'm pretty confident that's gonna work. Okay, and then I will need to do the next row. And that's going to be, let's see, seven. Let's give that space, it looks ugly. So seven, and now we are in row three. Seven and the lambda is seven. Okay, so this should be eight, nine, and subtract. And you can see how the GUI part takes a lot of time, um, but that's just what it takes. Seven, eight, nine, nine, and this is subtract. And let's go ahead and fix all these things. So eight and eight, nine and nine, and this is subtract and this is subtract. Again, we also need to fix the columns. So they're all in the same row, row one, or sorry, row three, column zero, one, and two. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and test it. Okay, so I've added seven, now it's working down at the bottom, eight, nine and minus okay so we're really you can see how it's kind of coming together and now i think we got two more rows to do so two more rows yeah i think two more rows 
So let's go back and look at the grid. So we've done up to here. We need C, which is clear, zero, uh, dot, and plus. All right, so this is going to be clear. Oops, let me go back to the main screen there for you. This is going to be clear. And the text is just going to be a big C. And in this one, I'm actually not going to be adding that one. I'm going to make a new function called clear. Okay, so I'm going to go up here and go ahead and make the basic structure of that. So I'm going to call that clear. I'm not really passing a value, so I don't really need to do anything there. And I'm just putting pass here as a placeholder. This, this will prevent me from getting an error. And I'll add the, the uh, code later. And this is going to be in row four. Now, since it's a little different, I'm not going to copy that because it uses clear instead of add. So I need uh, zero now. I need, oh, I can't put, yeah, this has to be button zero. Text is zero. Command is zero. And I've got a, I'm not sure how to pause this, but I got a delivery. I'll be right back. Okay, just had a delivery. Hopefully, I'll get back to this. Now, where was I? Um, so add zero, and that's going to be in row four, and it's going to be in column one. Oops. Uh, let's see here. So we got button zero. Next up is going to be button dot, and then it's going to be button add. So dot dot add add. Again, just put the dot there. In this case, we are adding the dot. So that, that's we do want that to stay the same. And add, same thing. Again, you know, this, will, this will make a little bit more sense later. But yeah, I think you get the idea from the uh, demo. This should be column two, and this should be column three, if I recall correctly. So let's go ahead and test it. OK, it's really starting to come together and look like a little calculator, which is, pardon me, kind of cool. So one, two, three, divide. I'm just going to test everything. Four, five, six, asterisk, seven, eight, nine, minus. Uh, clear doesn't do anything yet. Zero dot plus. Fantastic. And then the final button that we need, if I go back to here, is the equals button. And I put that, made that really big at the bottom. So it's in row five. And we're going to be doing basically the same thing we did up here with the label. Okay, so we're gonna be using column span again. But the thing is, uh, button's a little different, so you'll, you'll see the difference here in a second. So I'm gonna go, to, I'm gonna make, uh, I'm just gonna copy this, because it's easier to copy, once you have it working once. And this is gonna be called button equals. And that's gonna be in row five, column zero. And I'll put row span equals, again, four, because it's four, equals. And then the function here, we're not, we're not adding, we're not clearing, so I'm going to call this function calculate. Okay. So then I'm going to go up to here, and I'm going to make a new function called def calculate. And same thing, pass. So I'm going to use that there. I'm going to test it. And there is my button. But you, <clears throat> excuse me, but you see how it's way over here, even though I put column span. So what I got to do in the case of a button is I also have to add the following. So it's width equals. Now on my computer, it was 16 worked out really well. And this is 16 characters. It's not pixels, it's characters. Let's go ahead and test that. Oh, geez. Did I do something? I did something weird there. Oh, I put row span, duh. <laughs> uh, column span. Okay, and let's try that again. And now you can see how the equals button is pretty big. All right, that's the GUI part of it. Okay, so our GUI is created. Our code is connected to the various functions that we're going to be using to do this. And this is where we uh, have to actually start doing some calculations. Now, before I get to that, I want to show you down here. I'm going to go into the Python interpreter. Okay. And if you look down here, I know the text is a little bit small, sorry. But basically, what we want to do is we want to do something like 3 plus 5, you know, times 4, or whatever. So I hit enter. You can see how Python automatically 
calculates that for us. In our case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing something like the following. We're going to be making a mathematical expression. It's going to be a string. And if I do 3 plus 5 times 4, I do that. If I say print expression, it's just going to print it out. Sorry, that should be 3 plus. Sorry. So let's go expression equals 3 plus 5 times 4. Okay, I forgot the quotes. So hit enter, and I'll go ahead and print expression again. It just gives us the exact expression. So what we need to do is to use print, and it's a new command you may not be aware of. It's called eval. And then what it does is it evaluates whatever you've entered in there as Python code. So you gotta be really careful that nobody can hack into it and you know start messing with your system. But in this app, it should be pretty safe. And so you can see now it has evaluated this expression, three plus five times four. So it's four times five because of order of operations is 20 plus three is 23. So we're gonna be using this and putting that into our calculator app. Okay, so here we go. Now, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be using an expression. So in this particular case, I'm just gonna be using a global variable. And when we start our program, the expression is blank. And what we want to happen is when we click add value, that value is added to the expression. So normally I wouldn't recommend using global variables, but in this case, it makes our life, it actually makes our lives a little bit easier. Otherwise we'd have to you know, make a little object for it or something, I guess. But uh, let's just stick with a global variable and please forgive me gods of Python. Um, so I'm going to say global, uh, global expression. Now, if you're not familiar with global and local, I think I have a video about it uh, somewhere. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and print expression. Oh, sorry, I missed a step. So I'm going to say expression plus equals value. Okay, and notice I'm printing here, but we'll, we'll get away from that in a second. So what it does is whatever button I click on, it's going to take this expression and it's going to add that to the value, or add the value to it, sorry. So I got an invalid syntax on line one. That's annoying, isn't it? Oh, I'm in the still in the Python interpreter here, so I got to exit that. Oops. There we go, so exit. Let's try it again. I'm going to run this. Okay, so I'm going to hit one, and you can see down here the expression is now one. Then I can go plus three times five, for example. Okay, so you can see how the expression is now building up, okay, which, which makes me pretty happy. So that, that's, that's basically what we wanted. Um, so what we want to do now is evaluate the expression when we click Calculate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, let's say result equals eval expression. I'm going to say print result. This is what I just did down here. So what should happen is that it's going to evaluate whatever expression I have entered and print the result. So let's try that. And again, notice I could have jumped into doing the GUI stuff, you know, put it right into the GUI. But what I'm going to do is I'm separating it into sections. You need to learn how to break a problem down into parts and do it piece by piece. So this is one part that we don't know how to do. So I'm gonna try and go and do, so what was it, three plus, and that thing's still printing, four times five equals. Okay, so I now can see that I'm getting the correct answer. So then all I have to do now is get this into the GUI. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. So Global expression, expression plus equals value print expression. Um, let's see here. Okay, expression. Okay, so the expression is going to be changed here. So I'm going to say global expression. And you'll see why in a second. So I printed the result. Uh, what I'm going to do here is label result 
Config. And last time, if you watched my uh, BMI calculator, I did this slightly differently. But I'm going to do this like this this time. Equals result. Cool. So let's go ahead and test that. And something went wrong. Where it is? This is the new one? Oh, because I saw the old one running. So let's type 3 times 3. Oh, this is the old one. Let's close that. There's the new one. So I'll say three times three, or two, okay? I'm gonna click equals, and you can see now we got the answer. Now, here's a problem. So it gave me the answer, which is good. Now, if I hit plus, notice how it's still continuing the old result, okay? Which is usually not what we want. So what we wanna do is once the result has been calculated, we're going to set the expression to result. Okay. So here, let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to say 3 times 3 equals 9. So now if I push plus, okay, well I, got an, I got an error. Ah, okay, I got it. It's telling me I got an error. It says unsupported operand types for int and string. So because the result is, an, is either going to be an integer or a float, I need to change this to a string. And this is another reason why you should be testing your code as you go through. So let's go ahead and I need to close these old versions. Yeah, if you don't close them, then you won't be able to get good. Uh, oh, this is a really old one. It's, that one's up here. Uh, let's get rid of that. Okay, I can't close that one. Lovely. Can't close that. Okay, let's close the whole terminal. Okay, that one's stuck. I'll have to deal with that one later. Um, yeah, so let's see here. Let's try it one more time. Make sure we got the latest version. So 3 times 3 equals, it gives us 9, times 2 will give us 18. Okay, so this is giving us what we want down here. All right, so I'm happy with that. Um, let's see here. What else do we need to do? Um, we need to deal with clear okay so if we want to do clear clear is pretty easy we just do global expression uh, equals global expression and then we say expression equals blank and then again we have to update the label and equals in this case expression okay, let's try that So it is 6 times 6 equals, we get 36. I'm going to hit clear. Okay. And then I'm going to say 6 minus 3 equals, and it gives us 3. So that looks like it's working. We haven't tested dots yet, so let's do 3. See, that kind of didn't quite work how we wanted it. Times 9. Okay, so you can see how that did not work. So let's, ah, I know why. Okay. The other thing is we need to now, up instead of printing it down here, I should have been doing this all along. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And now that's going to go there instead of printing. Okay, so let's test that out. Okay, so 3 times 3 equals 9. I'm going to push dot 6 plus 6.4. Okay, so I've tested it with a few different values. That's good. I'm going to hit clear. Now I'm going to hit equal sign with something that's blank. Okay, and you can see here we get an error. Okay, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to close that. I'm going to run it again, and then I'm going to try and enter a bad expression instead of 6.9. I'm going to try 6.9. And again, you see we get it, we keep getting an error, so we need to deal with that. And the way to do that is we're going to use something called a try accept loop or try accept uh, I guess block um, so I'm going to go to calculate okay and I'm going to say I'm going to put reason well, I can leave that out I'll say result equals nothing okay, and then the first problem was if we have something if it's blank so I'm going to say if expression is not blank, 
then I'm going to do all these things. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it. So I'll say 5 times 5 equals. Okay, I'm going to clear it. Now I'm going to hit equals. Okay, notice nothing happens because there's nothing here to, to print. And notice there's no error. So that fixes that. So let's try 9.9 .9 hit equals. We're still getting a syntax error. So what we have to do, if it's not blank, we're going to do the following. Try. Okay. And in the case of accept, I'll explain this a little bit in detail in a minute. I'm going to say result equals error. And then I'm going to say expression is now blank. And then down here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this out of it. Mean, I don't have to do it this way. I could just copy and paste. I could do this. Uh, but what I want to do, since I have, I have repeated code, which we always want to avoid, I'm just going to put that there, make it a little bit more efficient. Okay, so let's test this. Okay, so if it is not blank, okay, so the expression is not blank, we're going to try to evaluate it. Okay, and it evaluated, there was no error, so it skipped down to here. Okay, now I'm going to clear it, I'm going to hit equals. Okay, it's blank, so it just skips down to here, label result.config equals result. Okay, so that's going to keep it blank because result is blank here. And the final one, I'm going to do a problem, 3 dot dot 9 plus 6. I'm going to hit equals. Oh, let's try it again, 9.9.9.9 .9 .9 .9 9 .9 minus minus 9. See here it says error, so it says the result is error, and then it resets the expression, because there's two things. We're displaying the result but the expression still exists separately. So we need to reset that as well. Okay, so then what I could have done, 9.9 .9 equals, or plus 0.6 equals gets an error. Now if I start typing, it just goes right back to three, which is pretty cool. Okay. And I think that's pretty much it. I think that's the whole program. So you can see how it's pretty easy, I think relatively speaking, to create a working calculator. Notice that most of the code is actually the GUI code, because okay, there's quite a lot of GUI elements. So each element requires two lines of code. And there's 17 buttons plus one label. So that gives us, what, 34 lines of code. Except for that, it's pretty straightforward. Again, I don't usually like to use global variables, but in this case, we'll leave it. Um, so yeah, so that's it. That's, there's your calculator app. Um, I will leave a link to the code down below. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Appreciate that kind of stuff. It's not too much to ask. Uh, and just as a review, we've gone over a little bit of TK Inter. We talked about the grid geometry manager, the eval statement, try and accept blocks, which basically traps errors, it's called, and using lambdas so that we can send a value in our commands here using TK Enter. And that, my friends, is that. Thanks for watching.